name is Sister West, and welcome back to Family Quest. We are back at our dig site, having completely excavated the trail ruins. We have removed every bit of rock in between, but we have uh, completely cleared out around the different buildings and we have labeled what they are or what we suspect they are. This is the observatory based on the fact that it is a tower shaped and has a cartography table in it. This one, the granary for the same reason except that it has a grinding wheel on it. Uh, this could be something else but there were also wheat seeds found in here. This is a man-made road that goes and extends to the other side here. We've got a pool. We've got a textiles room. And I think we're going to change that to um, the work area because although they have a, a loom here, which was uh, clearly used for producing textiles, and there was a lot of dye found in here. They also uh, clearly used dye on terracotta, and, uh, and they could have dyed wool as well. Uh, we can uh, uh, infer that uh, they had animals because we found a lead. Uh, here's the other end of the road. The temple, that is a very big question mark. And the dormitory, also a question mark. And this, these two pieces right here are the most troublesome ones um, to figure out. And so as we look, there are a couple of big questions. This is a road that goes across the site. So why is this there? Some of this, especially the interior part, has clearly fallen from above, but was this an arch building over the road? Or was this part of this structure that fell over or was pushed over? There was clearly a lot of um, uh, movement of earth in here. We have uh, things like coal and copper that predate the site that were pushed into the center of the site. So there's been a lot of uh, land movement and the, this area over here was completely uh, surrounded by water. So um, my feeling is that this structure and also judging by the colors of it uh, has been pushed over from this one. And then we've got the second question of the um, glazed terracotta. Uh, this piece is, piece is down below, clearly fallen from up here. But what was the purpose of the terracotta? Was that a floor that made up a mosaic? And if so, what are the purposes down here? We've just got two randomly placed pieces. Uh, there's also the possibility that the glazed terracotta could simply be the result of a fire uh, because that is how you get glazed terracotta in the Minecraft universe. So that's something we're still working out. And um, we have uh, this area up here ready uh, to recreate our uh, primitive village once we've decided, you know, what the status actually is. And over here we have our uh, visitor center. And it's still a work in progress too. And in here we will have uh, books about the site and about the archaeology, the archaeolo archaeological work that was done here. So over here we have uh, the artifacts recovered at this site. 
What do they tell us about the people who lived here? About how these people lived? So we've got, uh, we know they dyed different things. They have colored glass. We have actual dyes that have been found. Uh, we found clay. Oops. And uh, we can, based on that, we know that they did not have to trade to get terracotta. They could simply uh, make their terracotta here. Uh, we're right next to a river. They could have easily got clay. Uh, they were making pots. They've got music discs, purpose of which we don't know. Uh, they had an economy based on emeralds. So that that might lead us to believe this was an early villager site, although still don't know that. That's also going to play a part in the size of doorways and things. Um, we've got some armor smith templates, so they were capable of making armor. Uh, we've got wheat, which they clearly grew, and we knew that because they're using mud brick anyway. You need wheat to make mud brick. A lead, which is definitely an indicator that they domesticated animals. A hanging sign and this is important not only because of the sign but because of the wood this is a spruce sign and we are in a spruce forest so that might expect uh, we might expect that spruce would be their main wood but it tells us that the environment is similar now than it was then they had spruce wood available and also uh, there except uh, for things like the loom here made of wood. There are very few wood artifacts in here. And so they, it, since it was almost completely covered, uh, any wood in the construction of the buildings would have rotted away. So the fact that they don't have wood on their buildings isn't an indication that necessarily that they didn't have at one time because they clearly used wood. Uh, lots of pottery shirts, more dye, white, and uh, there's a lot of white terracotta. So that's kind of a clue there. And they used coal, although we haven't found a furnace. So, um, I don't know if you can hear that, but it just started raining outside. Um, why is that significant? Because right now at my house, it is 110 degrees and it is raining. So, so all of the artifacts have been put away and we've got a lot of materials here that were uh, similar. I've also brought some wool since they have looms, we knew they have wool. So, and the uh, first thing we need to do, we need some, uh, we don't have any red terracotta here. I got every color but red. Well, that is unfortunate. Alright, so let's sleep. Okay, well the easiest thing to build would have been the um, um, pool over here. But I think we'll start with the observatory. And we know that it has two levels of red brick. Let's place these. Oops. And take out this stuff here.
let's take a look at the construction of the observatory here. So there's two levels of red brick, and then the door. And we have this raised road Which is interesting. So, um, so we're also going to need to raise our road. Two levels. We have two levels of purple and then one, two, three levels of white. for our road and uh, we'll throw in some regular stone. I'm not going to worry about cobblestone. The, the road has a good portion of cobblestone in it now but that uh, may be from the wear. So our road is going to be this high. Terracotta. All right. Let's go ahead and lay down some road here. I'm going to make it one high because there is a possibility that. part of the road was submerged. If they built uh, roads like the Romans did, they would have dug down into the earth and put uh, a layer of cobble-like material underneath. So This is the second wandering trader that I've had out here. Kind of like the pattern that I had in the road here before, so I'm going to maintain it for the most part. spent a great deal of time clearing out the trees around here as you can imagine but that also gave us a lot of uh, spruce wood 
which we can use as building materials. We do know that uh, spruce would have been the building material used by the inhabitants here. Ordered this thing with bricks just to so we know the edges of the size of the village. Okay, we need some white and purple terracotta. area. So I need to like to see where the floor is on that. Floor starts on the okay. So there's a good possibility that this was actually buried. And that they just walked right in here. Okay. that. Okay. Well, one thing I didn't do while I was back at the home base was get my tools sharpened back up, which <laughs> Elijah really needs it. Okay, so instead of this, what we've got is this. We've got uh, bricks under the walls here. You can see there's a large aquifer under here. Um, So we've got this door. Yeah. Or did I build up the road for nothing? accuracy here. Okay. Okay, the floors at the top 
level with the top of the ring. Okay. That makes sense. Sort of. way to get up here. There we go. So in fact we're going to fill this in completely. Seems like a waste of brick to have this hidden level, but that is the way they did it. Okay, now we've got our next level with white terracotta, which seem to be one of their preferred building materials. I said that was three levels, right? Or three. Oh no, we have two levels of purple and then, and it is, oh it's blue terracotta, it looks purple but it's blue terracotta and then three levels of white. I suppose I should be writing this stuff down. So this is obviously an important building because they are spending a lot of time on the coloration, getting blue dye and dyeing the clay that they've dug out of the river. isn't it? Like so. base of it. And what comes next? Blue end. It's a light brown color. Okay, the top is Broken. Well, 
but we can tell that it's indented. It's broken over here. Okay. And we do not have that color of terracotta, do we? What is that color? It's the same as this. unlike real life archaeology we can simply go in here and see what it is it's light gray terracotta okay that was interesting what's in there there's a stair in there That stair is probably the missing stair here. This block was added by me. So I could get up here. Okay. And okay. I think four gonna have to fly home. Get some red light gray terracotta. Okay, how about this? Okay, we've got three high mud bricks and we have, sh oh, shells, you know, I didn't even notice this before. This adds to my thoughts, this is probably a storage unit and probably a granary. All right, let's go ahead and do it. Three tall mud bricks, two below and one up. Okay. Two below ground and one above ground. street level, I should say. Okay. reasons that they could have been digging so deep. Uh, one was they needed that depth for the stability of their building. Another could be the lower level represents an earlier building that collapsed and then they built the same structure on top of it.
Uh, there might be some kind of cultural or religious significance to it. It could be any of those based on what we know. We know very little about it. Okay, but the floor is level with the street except for this lower section. So we've got enough to do that. Say, say two packed mud. Make them into mud bricks. And then we have one level that's above the street. stone was. All right. Now, what do we have above? and then one, two, three levels of orange terracotta and we've lost part of it but they seem to come to a dome structure and on this side we've got shelves and there certainly seems to be no reason why we wouldn't have shelves on this side okay now we did have a hole here and a step up. So the steps that I put in would not be accurate. I put steps in here. Okay. 
and we also used some they also used some pack mud. Terracotta, packed lead, and some shelves. Okay, first let's just fix our interior. Uh, we don't have shelves here. Instead, Solid like so. So they were walking down and stepping into where the grindstone is. Okay, and got one level of white terracotta. Terracotta. Okay. And then we've got our dome structure here. She goes in like so. in here. And on this side we had our shelves. And this was solid. These were solid here. And they were walking here, so they probably did not have shelves here. But you could have sat here and worked the grindstone. The grindstone was up here against the wall, so you could have had shelves here. So, branch down below. Okay. Torch here, that's where the grindstone would be. Okay, what's the ceiling like in there? Very center, it's impossible to know. We've lost this portion of the ceiling. Okay. This is also pressed up against the structure. I've chosen to separate them. I think the 
Have you seen some movement here of the, of the ground? Okay, now was there any wood here? I think we can assume there was a door. Probably some other features. We know they also use decorative pots, both large and small. Okay, let's. Uh, Another wood of choice was spruce. Did their door inset? No way to know. possible they could have had some kind of a wooden top. This is a, a wet area and uh, terracotta would be very uh, badly affected by the rain, which may be why we have no uh, a good portion of our original um, our original roof missing. So what if we want something like a wooden roof on top? I'm listening to the rain in uh, my house. Let's see. We started here. out. So I'm going to say that's unlikely. What if we had something like this? out better.
Okay, the problem with that is, what do you do next? You do something like this. Then you're going to have to come up a full block. Then you don't want a flat roof in rainy weather. So you need to have some kind of uh, slant like so. is a strange uh, material for such a wet area. And we know it was wet because it, it, they were using spruce wood and we're st we still are. is much more understandable. There must have been something about uh, the mud brick that worked for them. Perhaps because this was a granary? Mud brick takes in moisture, but it might also uh, release moisture more quickly, keeping the interior dry. Particularly, you know, you didn't have just a big pile of grain in there. You had it in pots, as evidenced by their shelves in there. But I'm thinking that in order for that uh, to wear and not uh, or in order to reduce wear, I should say that they had to have some kind of supports. So what if we had something like that on the corners? Need any windows for a granary? Got enough slope to the roof that you can have water draining off. And what else are we missing here? I think 
we are missing a hanging sign, which we know they have because we found one in the artifacts. Okay. I believe we need six of these. granary then. And you might say, but Wes, why would they need to label it such a small community? Um, well, I don't know, but they clearly were labeling something with their hanging signs. Oh, now we made five of them. Take a quick nap here. I just didn't pick it up. So then we can right here, or maybe stick it out to the side. that would be an obstruction. Of course it would be an obstruction here too. How about over to the side? Like right here. Granary. See, we need some pots in here. The final touch on this build. I know I picked up some bricks. There's some, but I picked up more than that. I think I left one of my shulkers back home. All right. So we know they made small bricks. And we also know they made big bricks because we've got some pottery shirts, which apparently don't stack. Do that, that. Can you put one of these in here? No, you can't. I saw somebody doing that. I'm gonna figure out. Have to figure out how to do it. All right. big enough for the big pot. Yes it is. And we can't actually put one of 
these here. So put those there. There we go. So once we get a grinding wheel in here, I think this one will be done. So from our archaeology site on the Family Quest server, uh, so long for now. When we come back, we will be continuing on our observatory build. I will have gotten some red terracotta and continue with our attempted recreation of this ruin. My name is History Wes. Thanks for stopping by and as always, keep on Minecrafting.